Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to Business Focus program uh, handled by Poland Weekly. My name is Sylvia Ziemacka, I'm the host, and today I have a great privilege to talk to Dagmara Kruskiewicz, who is a founder and an expert in senior living and senior care uh, market, uh, based in Amsterdam, but looking into Poland market for a, for a long time. Uh, I will be very interesting to hear what are the uh, main takeaways and whether we can see that some developments in the area of senior housing and healthcare in Poland. The, tem- the, the topic is up to date definitely because we know that aging demographic is something that Poland should take care of and look for some solutions uh, according to the demographic tsunami. So let's start maybe with, with your introduction. Please, Dagmar, say a few words about yourself and then we'll focus on the content. Uh, good morning, Sylvia. Uh, I'm very happy to be here in the studio with you today uh, and, uh, and on such a beautiful sunny day as well in Warsaw. Um, my name is Dagmara Kriskiewicz and I am a regulatory compliance expert and an investor, primarily in real estate and precious metals. I am a, a member of the Senior Housing and Healthcare Association and also I'm associate of uh, Multiple Impact MI. Uh, we are a boutique consultancy and advisory uh, for operational asset classes such as senior living and elderly care. Perfect. And that's actually something we'll focus on. So let's start maybe with the broader picture, maybe some macroeconomic view on the you know fact that Poland's uh, aging population is a fact. So what is your assessment of the potential of the growth in senior housing and healthcare uh, in the upcoming decade? Yes, yeah, so definitely the main drivers that will be shaping the growth of the of the of the elderly care and senior living market are uh, aging demographics. This is this is not questionable uh, because the Poland population is aging rapidly and the expectations are that from the present uh, number of uh, elderly uh, over 60, 60 years old that are at the rate of about 25% at this point of time, in the next decade or two, by 2050, it's expected that this number is going to grow to around up to 40%, which actually means in practical terms, then every third person will be over 60 years old and every eighth person will be over 80 years old. So obviously these numbers are really alarming, but at the same time we live longer and uh, we remain healthier. So there will be more and more need arising for the for the facilities and for the suitable sel- services for the uh, silver generation. So that is the first thing. Another uh, point is that uh, there is a huge market demand, but very little is discussed in Poland in terms of how shall we provide housing for older adults. Uh, and uh, there, the, the sector is still very much uh, undeveloped. So there is a room for growth in any uh, sub asset class. Either we will look into senior living or we will look into assisted uh, living, elderly care, memory care. Um, everything is still very much underdeveloped. So we, 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 there is a huge room for growth. And then lastly, I really hope that the, the, the government initiative and the establishment of Ministry of Police, uh, Senior Policy is really going to uh, look closely into this uh, subject and uh, take it seriously that demand and the needs are there and they should be met and something would be done about it at the central governmental level from the administrative perspective. Either there will be offering some incentives, grants, uh, there will be a policy change that will be supporting this growth. So I think that these are the main important aspects. Yeah, it's interesting because actually Poland can learn from the other markets, which are much more mature. And we know actually, you know, in many areas, Poland made such a, a so-called leapfrog. So, you know, you know, took uh, the, the lessons from other markets and took it in the best way uh, on the market. So I think it's very important to learn from from the others. So, you know, the, the best practices across the, the European market. So what type of is in your housing? I mean, of course, we have independent living, assisted living, different skilled uh, nursing facilities. I think they, you know, maybe it's worth to say what are they? <laughs> that actually this asset class is much broader than just nursing homes, which I think uh, many people just think when you talk about senior living and senior housing, they think that actually it's nursing homes, yes, which is not exactly true. So what is the most uh, uh, promising uh, of this asset class in Poland in terms of investment? Sub-asset class as senior living or even assisted senior living does not really exist uh, in, in our country as comparable, for example, 
to the US, Canada, or Western European countries that this, uh, this sector has been developing very well uh, for many, many years and also is really profitable uh, because of the aging demographics, because of the uh, growth of the uh, older adults and the number in, the, in their uh, percentage in the population. So uh, I would expect that especially senior living and assisted living uh, would be a great directions for the developers and investors to go into in our current market. And then you asked me about also the difference. So um, senior living is mainly addressed for active independent adults who would like to live with people at their own age group and who would like to live in the community, have a support, be able to make new uh, social, for example, contacts and relationships. And then assisted living is the next stage when you are still living independently on your own, but you have a certain level of support with the daily task. It's not a very intensive medical care, but it could be a little bit of nursing and uh, doctor's assistant, for example. And then obviously the most demanding uh, level of care is long-term uh, care and cure, or for example, dementia care, where people obviously are in a much worse um, shape and then they demand a full-time uh, intense medical and nursing care. Mm -hmm. So I would say that actually this senior living and or whether it's independent or assisted, it's more on the side of the uh, lifestyle, so which means that we would like to actually encourage people to, to maybe change the setup of their housing uh, facility because infrastructure can also support uh, longevity. It means that, you know, in, in I think in a broader social context, it's to encourage people to, to do things that will help them to live longer in health, not just to live longer, right? Yes, absolutely. Because uh, the research shows that actually living in community and building these social relationships and getting support, it really enhances your me mental well-being as well, mm -hmm. which leads indirectly, indirectly to your longevity. You live longer, you, uh, you, you, you have a better quality of life, and obviously it also uh, benefits the system of each country and, uh, and the healthcare system, because obviously the cost of, uh, of medical uh, assistance then uh, drop drastically if people live longer and, and happier and they are in a better shape. So definitely. But are there any features in terms of, for example, independent living? I mean, it's on the resi side, yeah? So it's like residential facilities. Uh, so are there any features that make them more for seniors or uh, or there are just the similar? Like we know that now PRS market is booming in Poland. So whether it's kind of the same or it's a little bit different? Senior living is more of a, a residential uh, asset uh, rather than the operational asset as a long-term care. So for example, if we uh, here in Poland are successfully developing PRS and student living, then it's really easy to convert this operational model, which is a lighter structure, into the senior living as well. So just a little switch and tweaks with the services that are being offered instead of for students, for example, for the needs of seniors, whether you have a, a cleaning service, you have a food and beverage, for example, you have uh, somebody who is organizing time and uh, organizing events for the for the seniors or even for them to take the initiative and be responsible, just taking up different fun functions in the community mm -hmm. and just basically lead and also be the organizers and, uh, and feel needed and feel involved, because I think that this is also really important in the community. So uh, I do not really, I do not really see any major um, reasons why this market would not be seamlessly shifting from servicing, for example, younger professional in the rental apartments or student in the student housing to actually cater for the needs of uh, independent seniors as well just to tweaking the model slightly and added, adding uh, certain services. Mm -hmm. But you of course say that at, at this stage, actually this market, let's put it this way, does not exist really in Poland. So what are the barriers? What do you see as a barrier for investors? I think like in many aspects of real estate market, of course, we also need international capital in international investors. We see their activities in other markets, especially Germany, UK, in principle, you know, Western Europe, of course, the Nordic countries, which has a little bit different model. What about Poland? <laughs> the main barrier in Poland would be a lack of qualified operators, um, kind of international uh, chains of operators that can also bring the level of expertise and quality, which is uh, consistent across the board. But then but then again, we just discussed that senior living is really more on a resi side and more kind of a hospitality product 
than actually the operational assets. So I think also a, a little bit of increased level of education and awareness in the Polish market would also help the developers and investors to make this first step uh, and to take the risk and start developing these kind of properties for the senior and then also test the market. What is the demand? Because I have no doubt that demand is is there. I think uh, it's huge, you know, uh, even on the recent conference, I've, uh, uh, completely on a different topic. But we, we've heard about data, you know, that now we are having a generation of uh, of parents of adults who, for example, migrated or, or you know, they, they have their life in, in, in different places, not even in different countries. But you know the trend that the family don't stay together for the whole life. Like for example, you know you 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 live in the smaller village, you go you move to bigger city, even in Poland or outside like London, Brussels or somewhere else. And then if you have settled your life there, it's really improbable that you will come back just to take care of your parents. And sometimes these parents are in need, or sometimes they are left in a huge uh, apartment or huge house, and they are single or or two people just yes. So I think that's also you mentioned this uh, changing the mindset. I think it's really maybe the the key element of this change. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think we've been observing this kind of transition and the societal change uh, in Poland that this intergenerational living in terms of families tightly knitted together and staying in the same house or closely to close to each other, it um, it exists less and less. Another uh, difference that I've been observing between working in Western Europe and the Polish market. So, for example, uh, in the Netherlands or in Germany, uh, about 30 to 50 percent of the of the population are uh, tenants. So they basically rent throughout their entire life. So there is a lower percentage of owner occupiers, which in Poland is actually very much in reverse because our market is maybe 15% of tenants and the rest are owner occupiers, which actually means that maybe the pensions of uh, of uh, our Polish uh, retirees are lower, but definitely they are more uh, wealth in terms of their equity in their properties and in their assets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have an amazing property in a premium location, which is mortgage free, um, then obviously you have this kind of room to wiggle, uh, maybe to rent it out to somebody else. And then you downsize, you go and live in a place uh, that is uh, prepared for the needs of the seniors. And then, and then uh, having the profits from the other property, you are able to use it to pay for the living and also the, the services that you require when, you know, also gradually when you age. So I think that that would be a really interesting model to explore in our country. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. What about these more operational models, which means nursing homes, nursing fa uh, facilities? Uh, here, do you see the barriers? Because the demand is obviously still here. Lack of the operators. I think also the way our, the medical, uh, the health insurance system is structured in Poland, mm -hmm. uh, I think is also blocking uh, a growth. Because in, in, in Western Europe, you see that you get a, a more subsidies, you get much more incentives and a lot of services are paid, including the living services or long term care services are subsidized from the from the insurance here in Poland. Unfortunately, it's still limited. So when the uh, when the investors, operators are looking what kind of models are profitable here, they still struggle with this support of the of this of the public system. Mm -hmm. So just to meet the ends and make the make the deal to stack up, I think this is also mm -hmm. uh, a major obstacle here. Okay, so we started to talk a little bit about this regulatory environment in Poland compared to the other markets. Any lessons learned from the other markets? In Poland, uh, the regulatory landscape is still less mature than in Western Europe, and obviously, and it's it's I think for especially for investors from abroad, it's really not easy to na navigate it, and. Uh, in Germany or, or in the Netherlands, when these processes are really streamlined, then obviously it's more predictable. And when there is more certainty, then it's it's easier to grow the sector. Uh, you at least know what to expect. And here with uh, with uh, greatly changing regulatory landscape or, for example, tax regulations in Poland, I think it's really not easy to predict how the deal is going to turn out. So well, tax is one, but also, you know, the labor code, yeah, uh, which yeah, also affects absolutely. your cost operation. Yeah, cost, absolutely. Yes. Of course, because the, 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 the rates of inflation and uh, they are driving all the operational expenses of these kind of facilities as well. Uh, and including the workforce, that the, the 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 utility of the maintaining of the of the property, so that all 
combined together, it's not really uh, kind of painting the right picture to be an inviting um, uh, part of the market and the sector to invest in, and especially that it's really uh, operational investive, it's in, in intensive and really capital intensive as well to start this kind of facility. So, uh, so I think that the complex bureaucracy to navigate uh, the, the landscape and also the language barrier, I think, for a lot of foreign investors, uh, because I don't think that our public uh, administration is also very English uh, friendly, then then I think it's it's a little bit of a, a stopper, so to say. But yeah. do you think because uh, obviously, you know, uh, mature markets have this, uh, let's say, uh, intensive merger and acquisitions behind. Yes. But I think, you know, long time ago, it also started from a lot of small facilities, which we have in Poland. I mean, in terms of the private sector, probably if we go around the country, there will be a few. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know the quality of them, but at least there is something I, from what I've heard, you know, the, the waiting list is really huge. And, yeah. you know, so I'm wondering, uh, do you think that it will be more like a scenario that there will be big investors who will just see the potential of Poland and invest? Or this is more that we should expect more mergers and acquisitions? Or you think that those facilities do not, I think it's also about the number of beds, you know, the, the, the size and everything, or it's not actually something that can be taken over by the biggest, bigger investors? Yeah, so unfortunately, in our local market, there are no investors specializing in this asset class per se. Uh, because if we look at um, at the, in Western Europe, then there are investors who um, have a large percentage of their portfolio, if not 100%, only in senior living and elderly care. Mm-hmm. So they have a great understanding of this asset class. Um, and definitely they would be interested in looking into Poland. But the uh, the, the problem is still the economy of scale, because if they would like to make an acquisition, then uh, they would be interested in dealing with larger tickets. So just basically getting the entire portfolio deal. So but I think that this is a specific of the emerging market, um, like in Poland, that we I suppose we need to start with our own means and with our own either private or public investments and start building this portfolio, because this is also another element um, about the barriers. Um, that I hear from the investors and also the developers that they are uncertain if these properties, these portfolios will be transactable in the future, because obviously we have no no track record. And what is the exit? Mm -hmm. So either, you know, because normally when you start an investment, then you would like to kind of justify and I'm staying for a term of three years, five years, seven years, 10 years. And then if you are if you have another level layer and level of uncertainty that you do not know when you will be exited, then it also doesn't support and doesn't help to make this kind of decision and make the step towards building these portfolios. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's hope for such a project. And my yes. last question would be about these best practices. What do you think has, you know, uh, something can be really transferable into the Polish market in terms of what you see that works very well on other markets? Yeah, so one of the most uh, emerging trends uh, in Western Europe is uh, senior co-living. So this is a very much community-based approach. Um, and, uh, uh, and this is uh, highly reduces the feeling of isolation and increases the well-being of the seniors uh, when they feel support, when they live in their own community, um, just uh, adults from a similar backgrounds in an age group and walk of lives. Um, so that is um, uh, that is the first one. Another very interesting concept that I've been uh, watching is uh, daycares, but they combine um, uh, older adults with young children, uh, because we live in this kind of, um, the, the term for it is the sandwich generation, which means that we are having our children later in life when actually we are starting facing a problem of aging parents already. So, for example, I think that's well, great. Well, usually that- they're sandwich mothers. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So, so this is a great example when, for example, a parent goes to work and you can just go to daycare and you can drop off your young child and you can drop off your, your parent at the same place, because then obviously it's a it's a it's more efficient. It saves you time. And uh, it's also nice to mingle because, you know, mingle this older, older adults with children and have a little bit of kind of uh, 
uh, interactions together and the older adults can feel needed and they can feel involved. They can do, I don't know, read books or mm -hmm. just uh, play with little kids, right? So I think that this is very, mm -hmm. um, very cool model from the Polish perspective that we are still quite traditional. So I think we could to some sort of extent maybe the kids do not feel good about themselves if I just drop off my mom to like a long-term care facility. But then if you have this choice for a daycare, then you're still uh, developing your professional career. You still go about your life. Your parent is being taken care of during the day together with your, for example, younger, younger mm -hmm. kids. And then you still pick them up in the evening, in the afternoon, and then you can still have this responsibility and take care and feel involved. Uh, in taking care of um, of, mm -hmm. uh, of your parents. So I think that could also be a nice kind of in-between model, not entirely uh, dedicating and pushing this responsibility to somebody else, but just during the working hours and uh, have a little bit of a break to yeah, concentrate that, on something else. And I think that the solution can also be very effective in terms of uh, managing the, the workforce, because of course we have a shortage of uh, personnel. I, I, I was also engaged in some discussion about the, the market of home care workers. And I think that we have to face the fact that actually th this uh, this is shrinking, and also due to the fact that I saw some data that, for example, uh, on average, the Polish uh, care worker who are a lot a lot of them, for example, is working in Germany or in other markets. These are women 50 plus, and now with this also in general the problem on the labor market with looking for people and transition in many sectors. Somebody told me that nowadays, you know, uh, if the factories are switching into the four uh, in, uh, four zero industry four zero. It's not only men who can work there, but women can easily, you know, do some trainings and work there for very good salaries in a very good condition. So I think that we have to also keep it in mind and really take care of the care workers because it's really difficult work. And those people, there will be more or less, less and less people willing to work in this sector, right? So yes, absolutely. Using the best we can, the way how they are being effective in this matter, I think it's also important for the development of the market, not only in Poland, but everywhere. Everywhere, because the shortage of, uh, so shortage of workforce is uh, pre pre predominantly um, present anywhere in, in, in Europe, in the world, in the US uh, and Canada. They struggle with the same problem. So uh, so that's why I think building these communities, like for example, senior co-living, building these communities that actually increase your health and mental well-being is beneficial for everyone because who is going to take care of you? To some extent, you also need to take care of yourself and mm, make sure that you are active and be able to uh, to uh, live without any assistance and nursing support as long as possible because we do not know who is actually going to be able to support these needs. Yeah, and you know, so that is, yeah. Yeah, so it's about relations around you and also purpose in life. Yes, yes. people have to have a purpose in life. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. So another, another interesting concept is also uh, the intergenerational living and these kind of mixed use developments and neighborhoods that are being developed that actually support you through, and they are friendly through your entire life cycle. So uh, for example, um, it could be a mix of uh, PRS, it could be a mix of uh, student living, it could be a mix of senior living, and it could be uh, also a section for the families with kids. But also what is important so um, that throughout your whole life, you are able to have the properties um, available within the same neighborhood that actually meet your needs and your requirements. Also, we are working in the Netherlands with one uh, co-living, senior living, uh, operator um, that uh, what they do in their apartments that initially when you move in, it looks like a modern property, but you have all these functionalities hidden in the property that you are able, able to release later if the need arises, for example. So uh, oh, you can have the wider entrances and corridors, but then at the same time, you can have a support in the bathroom with the special handles or uh, maybe to have like some kind of hooks for the lifts uh, around your bed. And initially when you move in and you are still quite younger adult and you are still active, this is invisible and it looks super, super sleek and modern. But later you are able to uh, kind of, you know, release these functionalities whenever they are needed. And this is this kind of properties that we are speaking um, that you are actually able to live throughout your whole life and there is no kind of need to move be because we know that a lot of people are really attached to their neighborhoods. They have emotional ties 
they have the me their memories and they would like to stay within their community. This kind of, you know, neighborhoods following the life cycle. And also, for example, what, what we discussed earlier, that the Polish government is supporting aging in place, but also aging in the right place is really, really important so that basically your community supports your need at any age. So I think this kind of um, neighborhoods, they can really uh, accelerate this process and uh, make it easier for uh, for everyone to feel really comfortable and having the right amen the right amenities in a in a close proximity proximity and also access maybe to some greenery to some green spaces which contact with with nature and uh, and uh, also I think it's important that you are able to personalize your space mm -hmm. uh, to your own uh, individual tastes and needs because it also makes you feeling more at home and uh, yeah. Perfect. So this is, and then this is also like kind of linked to um, to this intergenerational living in these neighborhoods. And this is the model of companion care solutions, mm -hmm. which is more relationship based instead of task based. So we are used to, to this care at home model that, for example, you have a nurse or a carer, they come in, they have quickly 50 minutes, just complete this task, 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 and they leave. So this is the model based on the companionship and helping with uh, uh, support and everyday like daily tasks, but they are not kind of nursing and medical tasks, but they are, it could be companionship, just going for a walk with somebody, um, uh, maybe helping with groceries or helping with the transportation, picking up maybe prescription from the, from the pharmacy. And in these kind of intergenerational neighborhoods, for example, students, if they would like to help part-time, they can. Uh, if uh, maybe Ideal a neighbor, match, you know. yeah, you know, <laughs> if the neighbor is, uh, you know, would like to get involved and also help uh, elderly in the in the in the neighborhood in the, their society, that is also possible. So mm -hmm. I think that is also a really cool model that is uh, especially has been growing very much in the U.S. And the last one is uh, technology integration. Uh, because once we integrate the smart building um, system that improve operational of efficiency, and then also um, there is a huge emphasis on the technology for the fault prevention and health monitoring. Uh, these kind of devices are very much encouraged in the Netherlands. Um, then basically it enhances the quality of care as well. And uh, and uh, there was a research done um, in, in, in Holland that after the first fall, unfortunately, the well-being and health of an older person really, really drastically. The same in up. Poland. I was yeah. shocked. It turned out yeah. that actually the, the, the reason of that is that the uh, older adult tries to enter the, the bath. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, I was yeah. so surprised that that's uh, the main, uh, really, literally, I was shocked. This is the main reason why this person gets actually, you know, becomes independent in yes, a way because yeah. something with the hips operation or maybe some other problems. And uh, yeah, we wouldn't imagine such that a this, simple yeah, thing it, to change. Yeah, we wouldn't imagine that it leads to such a serious consequences. Yeah, you, for example, slip, you just, you know, just because obviously the bones of older adults could be a little bit more fragile, a little bit of hip fracture, and then it's just going downhill, 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 leading actually subsequently to death yeah. so and this is everything this is something that can be easily prevented so mm -hmm. so just we have this technology and uh, uh, um, age tech is developing really rapidly so i think we should be using the solutions to uh to benefit well to, so uh, it sounds that like poland has so many good benchmarks to to copy actually i would say and to look of course you know in the local context but keeping you know the best solutions also for the, that are good for the society but are also good for the economy so let's hope that this market will you know that our discussion will be kind of the call to action uh, yeah. for people already engaged uh, on the market especially on the residential side because i think there is no time to wait <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Uh, there is so much room for growth in this in this uh, sector here in Poland, and there is so much potential. And I think uh, a key to unlocking this potential is actually understanding the diversity of these asset classes that we just discussed, and uh, what are their characteristics, and what are what are the needs of the of older adults, and uh, and uh, because it's never that you it's never the way that you are actually able to translate a model, for example, from the Netherlands to or from Germany to Poland one to one, because we obviously need to take the local um, social norms, for example, or the lifestyle preferences or also historical uh, kind of influences into account. But I'm sure that we are able to uh, to get the right uh, kind of models in concepts 
uh, in place that will be working for the for the local Polish society as well. Well, so we are looking for the new projects in Poland. We encourage investors to start doing the new projects and we are looking for the proof of concept because definitely it works. We know it from the other markets. Dagmara, thank you very much. Very inspiring thank you, discussion. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much.